Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna of California, former U.S. Ambassador to Russia, now Director of the Institute for International Studies at Stanford, Michael McFaul, and Director of the Stanford Internet Observatory and the former Chief Security Officer of Facebook, Alex Stamos. The trio is out with a new op-ed this morning in the Washington Post <coughs> entitled, It's Time to Secure the 2020 Election, in which they put forth five actions necessary in order to protect the vote of the American people ahead of the next election. So Ambassador McFall, I take it you agree with the Director of National Intelligence that the lights are in fact blinking red? Uh, they are. They have for a long time. Uh, we were attacked in 2016. We now know that. And we should thank Robert Mueller and his team, by the way, for helping us to know more about that. The two indictments that he did provided an extreme amount of information. But unlike September 11th, we didn't have a bipartisan commission that looked into what happened and recommended what we should do in the future. I think that was a huge missed opportunity. And so my colleagues and I are trying to fill in the gap as we move forward. What can we do prescriptively to make sure this doesn't happen again in 2020? Congressman, uh, can't Republicans and Democrats get together after they hear Donald Trump's own uh, Secretary of Homeland Security say that Russia is trying to interfere with American democracy? Well, I was talking to Kevin McCarthy's team, and I said, this is something we can agree on. I mean, who wants the Russians to be interfering or some other country to be interfering in our elections? There's some very simple things we can do. We can require... By the way, do they agree with How you? Did he, what did he say? <laughs> well, they, uh, you know, uh, they said, yeah, okay, but uh, they always go back to Trump didn't have any involvement. And I said, here's, here's what we know. We know that the Russians wanted uh, Trump to win, and we know that they hacked our uh, emails and they uh, manipulated social media. I mean, tomorrow, imagine if some foreign power wanted to elect someone on the far left. I mean, this is really not a partisan issue. Uh, and there's some very, very basic things we can do. Let uh, ads be uh, disclosed on the Internet. Let's have coordination between our intelligence agencies and, and technology. Uh, David? Well, I want to ask Congressman uh, Conant, our uh, U.S. Cyber Command, our, our cyber authority, uh, we've reported, uh, hacked back against the Russians last October before the midterm elections briefly shut down some of the computers that they had used at the Internet Research Agency to hack our elections. Do you think that kind of offensive cyber action is a good way to deter future attacks against us? I would argue that there are other things. I mean, that's one uh, uh, possibility, but there are other things we can do first defensively. I mean, we can have a, a coordination among tech companies and better coordination with law enforcement. So we know if there are Russian bots on these platforms right. and that they can share things. Uh, and Alex Stamos, who's my co-author, who want to get into the conversation, mm -hmm. can go into to, to more detail. But there are, we can have uh, a, uh, a technology assist campaigns so that uh, no campaign is hacked. So there are some very basic things that uh, aren't going to involve uh, a lot of complexity, but we just haven't been doing it. And uh, Alex, uh, you can add on to that, but also uh, talk about what kinds of risks we're facing right now, how close our elections are to being infiltrated. So one of the things we've got to be concerned about is that the Russian playbook is out there. They played these, they played us in 2016. They did their, their multiple strains of attack. It was effective in at least disrupting our conversation about the election. And now that that playbook's out there, it's available to many, many other potential American adversaries. So just this morning, about an hour ago, my former colleagues at Facebook announced that they took down another 500 fake accounts and pages that look like belong to the government of Iran. Uh, and so we, we can't just worry about the Russians. We need to act now because what we've, we've telegraphed to the world is that the United States democracy has these weaknesses and that we will not heavily punish those who, who take advantage of them. Sam. Well, I guess I should 
fully disclosed at this point that my wife works for Facebook. Always embarrassing. And yeah. isn't Twitter God, really the I'd big problem no here? Uh, <laughs> you know, one of the no. things, <laughs> one of the things that uh, has been broached, and this is a question for you, Congressman, uh, as a way to maybe guard against the excesses of this, is to have the campaign committees and the candidates themselves make commitments to not use hacked materials. Listen, you may not be able to prevent hacking or the publication of it. Could happen on Facebook. Could happen on other sites on the internet. But if the campaigns and the committee say, listen, we're not going to use, knowingly use that material, uh, maybe that helps uh, lessen the blow of it. Would you be supportive of a pack like that happening between the DCCC and the NRCC? And would you encourage anyone running for president to make such a commitment? I would, and a lot of the presidential candidates have made that commitment that they wouldn't use hacked material, uh, and I hope the president will. I hope all the committees will. But you don't have to be uh, embarrassed for your wife. I mean, look, Facebook, I'm not. I love my wife. Facebook has done a tremendous <laughs> amount of good on uh, Black Lives Matter, on uh, Parkland Kids, on democracy. All we're saying is don't have these platforms open to foreign intervention and manipulation, and have these platforms help democracy, not undermine democracy. Sure. Yeah, and, yeah, and they, I do. I'm they, not embarrassed about my. No, that you, well, she's done a lot of great work. She, she has. Don't, don't undermine yeah. American democracy. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ambassador McFall. So let's go, let's go through some of these points. What are some of the five things we need to do? Well, the one you're just describing is one we outline in the piece. Uh, we talk about also greater coordination between the intelligence community and the tech companies. That did not happen in 2016. We endorse the Honest Ads Act as a way to regulate what is allowed there. Putin shouldn't be able to advertise uh, and influence our 2020 elections. And then we talk about cybersecurity, as, as Alex just mentioned, both for the campaigns to enhance cybersecurity for all campaigns. I have way more restrictions on me as a Stanford professor on what I can do uh, compared to what we allow presidential campaigns to do. And then finally, cybersecurity for the electoral uh, infrastructure, the entire infrastructure. We need a paper trail for every vote that is cast. And I want to remind everybody that we found, uh, the intelligence community reported, that the Russians were cruising around in 21 states uh, on election day. Thankfully, they didn't use that capacity. But right now, we've done next to nothing to, to deter them or to not allow them to use that capacity in 2020. And I just want to ex echo one thing that Alex said again. It's not just the Russians now. Everybody's seen this playbook, and it's going to be a lot more complex in 2020. Mm. Yeah, and, and to that point, Alex, I mean, we always in politics tend to fight the last war. What's the next frontier of this? So I think what we should be looking for is first for Americans to be manipulated and turned into patsies. So the, one of the big reactions by the tech companies here have been to change the rules around the authenticity of people that advertise in the United States. So what I would expect the response would be would be for the Russians and for others to try to support groups who are legitimately made of Americans who perhaps don't know that they're being used to be pushed uh, Russian propaganda. Mm -hmm. The other, just like Mike said, we have to think about the election infrastructure itself. In 2016, the Russians dipped their toe in the water here. They, they penetrated the systems of 21 states, um, something that we haven't talked too much about. And our election infrastructure is run by 10,000 different local election authorities. So the idea that an IT guy in Miami-Dade or some county in Ohio can stand up against a colonel of the GRU of Russian military intelligence by themselves is just unacceptable. And so we have to figure out a way to support and to build standards for all 10,000 of those authorities so that if there's an attack against our election, while it would be very hard to change the final outcome, it would not be hard at all to throw the, the results into chaos and to convince many, many Americans that the election had been stolen, perhaps permanently. David. A quick Congress, uh, con question with the Congressman. Sh should our tech companies, which you represent out in California, uh, should they be more willing to work with the U.S. government, not just on election security, but on new challenges like uh, using AI uh, in, in, our, in our national defense systems? What do you think? Absolutely. If we want to stay ahead of China, we need uh, Silicon Valley to answer the nation's call to service to help on AI, to help on figuring out how we create jobs and industries and places left behind, uh, to help on securing the elections. I mean, we won't stay ahead of China if we don't have Silicon Valley's leadership uh, and cooperation with the government. 
Congressman Rokana, Alex Stamos, and Ambassador Michael McFall. Thank you all.